Let's talk about something a little serious. It has really nothing to do with basically any data or information I presently have at hand. Let's talk about these vitamin feuds. Now what are these vitamin feuds? They're basically one group saying that vitamins don't work and another group saying that vitamins do work. Now the problem with a lot of these groups is they tend to play off each other. It's kind of like your Fox News and CNN. They need each other. Without each other, they don't exist. So this controversy creates the friction which allows the fire to grow which both sides benefit. It needs to come to an end. In a couple of days, there is going to be a segment on Dr. Oz and it's going to be present Dr. Mercola. Now each side claims to be chided to some extent. Obviously Dr. Oz making the claim that the vitamin industry is not regulated. Well obviously that's false and there's plenty of data to back that up. It only takes less than a second to research it. The question you have to ask yourself is why would anybody put their credibility on the line? Yeah, now it may be true that either McCullough or Oz have tons of accolades that are thrown upon them by their peers, but in reality, there's better ways to go about it. And one is, do you attack Oz? Do you attack McCullough? Well, regardless of that, number one is you don't stay on the defense. They're both wrong in their approach. Oz is smart enough to recognize with a minuscule amount of time he could find the information needed to basically cover both sides of the argument. Now why would these wealthy, glamorous, financially well-endowed individuals want to play this game when it's so easy to clear up? Buzz basically say clear up, but clear up how? Well, you clear up with data. If you're going to make a claim, make sure you have your footnotes ready. Now obviously for every study, there may be a counter study. So what you have to look at is the weight of the evidence. And as a side note, just to make certain something else goes on, do not let these individuals tell you there's alternative medicine and allopathic medicine. The war is in the language. If you get people divided, you can kill off one side. In reality, if this came from, let's say, Bristol Myers Squibb, and this came from a kid down the street and they both cured cancer, one or the other, they're both medicine or viable treatments. The only difference is one is industrial and conformist to a certain industry that tends to profit. The other, more individual, regards a personal sovereignty and there's not a much, as much profit involved. But at the end, if they fix a problem, they are both medicines. No such thing as alternative no such thing as allopathic. Medicine is medicine. Now, back to it. Looking at the weight of the evidence and the data. Now, obviously, a lot of times you'll hear what's called a meta-analysis. That's not really a study. And this is often what Dr. Oz will use or the Lancet did in the vitamin D thing. A meta-analysis is just me picking and choosing the studies that I like. It's full of what's called experimental bias because I'm using my bias to choose the studies. What I find qualified or what I don't find qualified what agrees with me or doesn't agree with me. Yes, that's a meta-analysis. You pick the studies that agree with you. Then you basically ring them out statistically until you come up with a result that your bias is most likely geared towards. So meta-analysis, in most cases, junk. Unless you're done being done by a trained epidemiologist or something like that, which most of them don't. Very few doctors actually know statistics. There are a few out there, but a majority of them are not well trained with that, including the doctors on certain TV shows. So, you go back to the data. Well, if Dr. Oz really cares about you, or Dr. McCola cares about you, what you do is you create a database with all of the data that's involved. All the research that has come out with vitamins, or supplements, or medications, or pharmaceuticals, and you compile it, and you put it in an easy format that people could easily understand, and you let them decide for yourself. I don't need these archetypes deciding for either you nor I what is good for me or bad for me if they're not going to present me the data in a clear, precise format. Now, albeit, there's a public library of science, the National Library of National Institutes of Other Sciences, and a ton of other things like Medline and so forth. 
They're a little bit complicated for the average individual to understand, but there are good sites out there that do interpret the data and make it easy for you to understand. One, for example, I like is Eureka Alert. I like the bioethics.com. I like things that are peer reviewed, which make it easy for anybody to read. And one I also compiled myself, which has no advertising on it and is done with my own dime, is healthresearchreport.me, all one word. I'm only about 40% done because it includes about seven years of work, but I try to keep it as non biased as possible, even though that is impossible not to involve bias when accumulating databases because you have to pick some and throw some out. You can't make the database include everything, otherwise it becomes too complex or too burdensome. And so, when it comes down to it, when you have an Oz or Mercola or whomever, you know, we've seen tons of people come and go, marginalize them. If they do not give you data to, to make your own decision, if they not at least direct you in the area of data and they don't footnote their claims, no matter what type of game show mentality they try to apply on basically whatever time zone they're at, or who funds them, or who's their advertisers, or what degrees they have, if they do not trust you with the data and they try to make claims based upon their own personal prejudice, marginalize them. Turn them off. Don't fight them. Don't attack them. Don't defend against their statements. It's basically like a crazy person or a spoiled child in the middle of the kitchen throwing glasses on the floor because they're no longer getting the attention they need. Unfortunately, this affects people's lives, their livelihoods, their future, their health, and their vitality. Otherwise, I wouldn't even make this statement. Well, thank you very much for listening once again, and I hope this does you a little bit of good. Thank you.